I'd like to tell you about a video I recently received from a fifth grade teacher. This teacher is giving her students the opportunity to create projects using programming, and she started videoing her kids talking about their projects. So there's this little girl named Jessica, and she's got long blonde hair and these little black glasses, and you can tell on the film she's so proud, like she's sitting up really straight in her chair. And she's got the computer behind her, and there's a game that she's built and designed on it. And it shows a cat trying to run away from some dogs. And she says, cats don't like dogs. I know this because I have two dogs, and they try to always eat cats. So that's her game, and her teacher says, what do you think about computer coding? What do you think about programming? And she says, I love it, because it is extremely fun and interesting and creative, and it offers me lots of options and opportunities. And it's just an amazing, powerful moment, because she's foreseeing who she can be in her future. So why am I telling you this story? In the next five years, there's going to be two million unfillable jobs in computer programming. And I believe that the way for us to fix that problem and fill those jobs is to get more girls, minorities, yeah. <laughs> to get more girls and minorities and kids from rural areas into computer programming. And in order to do that, we need to start young. We need to start in elementary school, when kids are starting to think about who they're going to become, and we need to show them that this is a creative and interesting possibility for their future. Now, you might be thinking, my child, my daughter, she's already a computer whiz, because she can do things on my smartphone that I have no idea what she's doing. That's great, but that's not computer science. In that case, she's just being the user of an application somebody else created. She's being the user of a game someone else built and the user of a website someone else designed. And we need to turn kids from the users of technology into the creators of technology. They need to be building the next website, the next game, the next application. And you might also think, well, my school, it already has the computer class. But a lot of times when schools say they have a computer class, what they actually mean is typing or business applications. And in business applications, students might use a word processing program to write a letter. They might use a spreadsheet to add some numbers. And those are good skills, but those are not the skills that are going to fill these two million unfillable jobs. So what is computer science? Computer science is giving logical instruction to a computer to create something new. Now, I'm going to give you some examples of that. These are some projects created by kids in fourth through eighth grade. So in this particular example, the student's using a concept called sequencing to order the instructions that the computer's going to follow to tell a story of kids stuck out in the rain. So she's telling a story that she cares about, and she's understanding that the instruction order is important to the computer. In this example, the student drew these horses, and she's animating them using repetition, a repeated instruction to the computer over and over again to create this illusion of movement. And she's expressing her love and passion for horses and art and her skill. So you can imagine the pride that this brings to the student. And in this project, the student has a game where the character catches falling Doritos in Mountain Dew cans. <laughs> <laughs> and they're using conditionals. So the condition says, if the character is touching Mountain Dew, then increase the score by one. So when the condition is true, the action gives a score increase of one. And this final example, it's a spinning flip-flop that squatches cockroaches. <laughs> it's from South Carolina, Charleston. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And they're using both repetition and condition, conditional. So the, the flip-flop is repeatedly spinning until the condition of the timer being out has been set to true. So you can see the creativity and passion that go into these kinds of projects developed by kids. And these are the skills that we need to fill those jobs. So the, the students taking these classes, what they're learning is that they need to have a vision for what they want to create. They need to be able to execute on that vision and create the code that provides this direct instruction to the computer. And they also need to be able to troubleshoot when something goes wrong. Because if you use the computer, you know, half the time it doesn't do what you expect. So that requires persistence. And those are the skills necessary to fill these two million jobs. Computer science jobs are creative, they require precision, and they require logical reasoning. And they're great jobs. So how are we going to get more women and minorities and people from rural areas into these jobs? 
Well, there's a study that shows that the top three controllable factors for women who choose computer science are understanding of career perceptions and knowing that there's a diverse set of uses for computer science, social encouragement by people just like all of us, and early academic exposure. So we need to tell kids computer science is not just about robots and space and math, because that's what they see in the media and in the movies. We need to tell them that it can be about art installations. It can be about the creation of music, which you in fact saw here today when you saw the sampling going on on stage, right? That has technology behind it. It can be about medical devices and the impact that people can have on lives. So once we share that with them, then we can bring more kids with diverse sets of interests themselves into computer science to share their own passions. Now I have a question for you. How many of you know a kid who can take out their smartphone and do like this, and their little thumbs just go a mile a minute, and they click send, and a message goes out? Like, how many people know someone who just types on their text, right? They just text like crazy. OK, so how many hours of texting class did those kids have? <laughs> right. How many texting tests did they take? How about year-end exams, the statewide requirements, right? None. What they had was they had the opportunity with the cell phone, they had the motivation with their own desire to express themselves to their friends, and the skill, the texting, it came out of those things. So what we need to do with computer programming is give kids those things. We need to give them the opportunity and to get this into the schools, and we need to give them the motivation by allowing them to express their love of running horses and falling Dorito bags. And then our role at that point, while they develop the skill, is to get out of the way and to be amazed. So that's the social encouragement piece. And everyone can do this. All of you can do this. You can say, show me the story of the running ponies. Let me play the flip-flop squashing cockroach game with you one more time. Right? That's your role, is to inspire them to continue forward. So I'd like to tell you quickly about a program that started right here in Charleston. It's called CS First, or Computer Science First, and it provides online videos to teach kids how to build the projects like what you saw here today. It's all free, and it's now had 30,000 students in it. And this has happened because of volunteers just like all of you. It's largely run by teachers who have no background in computer science themselves, community members who go into the schools and bring the program with them, um, college students who come back and help with uh, the local schools. These two girls are high school juniors. This is Michelle and Joanna. And they go to a school that has a pretty good, strong technology focus. But they wanted to bring this opportunity to other kids near them. So they went to a middle school, took the materials with them, and said, let us start a game design club. And now they're teaching kids younger than they are. They're high school juniors. They have no background in teaching. And they can bring this opportunity to others, just like all of you can. So I'm originally from Manning, South Carolina. How many people know where Manning is? Oh, look at this, pretty good. It's a town of about 5,000 people. It's really small. And I've been in technology myself for 15 years. I've had a pretty great career. And when people ask me how I've had my career, a lot of times I'll just say, well, I've been really lucky. But lucky, lucky is a lie. The, the luck may have brought me those opportunities that I've had, but the success was all in the scaffolding, <coughs> built by my parents, my teachers, my community members, none of which had a background in computers. It was the 80s. No one knew what a computer was in Manning, South Carolina. But what they did was they gave me some opportunities, and when I succeeded, they were amazed by what I did. And I feel like that gave me the courage and the desire to actually succeed and actually take on any future opportunities that came my way. So you can do exactly the same thing for the kids around you. You can go into your schools and take programs like these that you're seeing here. They're all free. They're all online. They're all providing self-guided materials. You do not need to be an expert. What you need to be is amazed by what they build. Help me encourage all kids to explore computer science, and you'll inspire the products that change the world. Thank you.